Hello internet friends. In today's show we're going to cover how to copy users and group membership in PowerShell. But no internet video is complete without a flashy, shiny, well-produced stinger video ahead of it just to set the tone, just to get everybody's minds in the right spot. So go ahead boys, take it away. Hi everybody, I am Todd Clint and today we're going to walk through how to create new Windows Active Directory users in PowerShell. <clears throat> now, I know what you're saying. We've done this all before. We have the t-shirts. We have, but today I'm going to add a little bit of a twist. Two twists even. Uh, twist number one is I'm going to show you how to do this by copying an existing user. This could be a template user of some variety, a user you've got set up just exactly the way you want it for certain other users. Twist number two is I'm going to show you how to copy a user's domain group membership to another user. Sounds fancy, huh? Well, it is, but fortunately for you, I've got it all covered in this video. Uh, what inspired this is a couple of weeks ago, I created a video on how to create new Windows Active Directory users in PowerShell. Uh, the internet loves PowerShell videos as much as it loves pandas and, you know, kittens and all those kind of things. Uh, and of course, the video was a huge hit. One of the comments that I received was from uh, Rashi Singh, and he asked how to do this, but how to copy an existing user, a template user. Uh, I hadn't done that before, but it sounded like a great idea. So thanks for being my muse, Rashi. This one goes out to you. This one's all for you. Uh, and before we get started too much further, you can find all of the files that I use today, the scripts, uh, the transcript, all that kind of stuff, by going to toddclint.com slash posh copy ad user uh, and you can get it off there and of course all of the links that i talk about will be in the comments uh, the, the show notes below and while we're talking about that leave a comment give me a thumbs up tell me how much you love this stuff so enough of the self-promoting let's get into the powershell the fun stuff okay so first what are we going to do the the idea here is that we've got a windows active directory it's our home of record for our, our users and we want to create a new user and we have a template user now this might be because we have certain attributes that we always set the same way for users or maybe we have many offices like uh, you know a u.s office and a china office and a european office and so we don't want to have to recreate all those things they all have the same address and those kind of stuff so we create a template user for each style of user and then we use PowerShell when we create our new users, when we onboard new employees, and just copy all of those attributes in, save ourselves some time. That's what using PowerShell is all about. So in order to do this, first we need to create our template user. So we're going to go into uh, Active Directory users and computers and... No, we're not. We're going to do this in PowerShell. That's what we're here for. So here you can see PowerShell is open right here. So the first thing I do anytime I go to PowerShell is I start my transcript so I can see all the amazing, wonderful, super cool things that I have done. You will notice that I am just in a regular PowerShell session. It is, um, and I'm logged in as a domain administrator. So this could be a regular window. This doesn't need to be an administration window, but it happens to be. And the user running this just happens, just needs to have permission to create users and all of that. So here I am. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a user in PowerShell or in Active Directory with PowerShell. So let's take a look at this. Um, we're going to create a user. It's going to be called underscore template one. So it floats to the top in, every, uh, in the syncing. Uh, user principal name is going to be underscore template one at TK demo. Homepage is just going to be that. Street address 1234 Main Street. That's where our home offices here are for TK demo. Uh, state, Iowa, city, Ames, postal code, description, user template, all of that. Uh, so not very exciting at all. And if we want to see our handiwork here, we can come over in uh, PowerShell and get that. You're getting the arrows at the bottom because when I copy out of the ISE, it's getting the next space at the end of the next line. So when you do this, you probably won't see those things. Don't let those throw you. Uh, so we've got a name, uh, users not uh, enabled, which is good, all that. Let's go ahead and look in Windows Active Directory so we can see what that looks like. And there's our user right there. So we can see what that looks like. And if we pop it open, uh, we can see the description there. We can see the address, all of those things. Okay, so that's our template user. And again, we might have one of these for an office or something like that. While we're in here, let's go ahead and add this user to a couple of Windows groups, give it some access to things. 
So we're using add 80 group member. Uh, and the name of the group is Ames Office. So again, thinking of geographical things. And then nerds, this particular template is for nerdy folks. So maybe we've got IT folks and HR folks and accounting folks. Uh, you might have different groups. So this one is in that uh, group. And let's go check that out. I should have done that before we went in here. So we can see member of, and it's of course a member of the built-in group, domain users, that's foreshadowing. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Okay, so we've got all that there. So what do we want to do? We want to make some copies. So the new AD user commandlet has support for that. It's called an instance, which is really just a template. And so let's do that. Let's get that user that we just created, our template user. And then let's verify. Okay, that all looks good. It's that template user, all the things that we said. Good. Uh, and let's go ahead and grab their group membership. So let's do that. And let's verify that. That looks good. They're in the Ames office. They're in the nerds group. They're in domain users. Everything is exactly the way we expected it to be. Okay. So now let's copy it. Let's look at this, uh, this user right here. Let's give that a new screen. So here is our new user. This is Alonzo. We're going to create him. We're going to use the instance or the copy of our template user, setting his own display name, his own user principal name, and all that. Let's go ahead and create him. There we go. Not very exciting, but there it is. And let's just verify that Alonzo is here. And he is. Good. So it's tough to really tell whether things were copied or, or not. So let's go in here. Uh, let's refresh Windows, uh, Active Directory Users and Computers. There's our man Alonzo. First sign of trouble. No description. Uh-oh. Uh, no description, no office, no address. Oh man, this PowerShell stuff's complicated. Uh, and let's double check. He's not a member of anything but domain users. Ugh. Uh, and just so that we can show that we could have done this in PowerShell as well. Let's uh, verify our template user. He's in all of those groups. Let's, uh, let's check out our man, Alonzo. Let's go ahead and this is why I copy and paste everything. He's in nothing. He's in domain users. So where did we go wrong? Why didn't this work? It's, it's all spelled out in the help pretty easily. Why didn't it work the way we wanted it to? There's kind of two parts to this. First is we have to define the properties that we want to bring over. And this is so that we can control, you know, obviously we don't want to bring everything over. So when we create, when we do that first get AD user for our template user, we have to tell get AD user which properties we care about. And since we didn't tell it any of that, that first time, we just said get the user, it didn't bring any over. So then when it created the copy, it didn't create any copies of them. So for this particular user, uh, we're going to assume they're in the same location. So we're going to bring all of these things in city, home page, state, country. Of course, this can be any user property that you can specify on the command line. So we will do that. Um, let's start a new screen here. So we're going to get all of those properties. And now when we do our, uh, our U, we can see all those properties. And if you remember before, we didn't see all those properties. We saw, you know, the distinguished name quid all that kind of thing so now i've got a much better feeling about this and just to show that we're you know not hiding anything i'm going to create a different user a second user this is alonzo number two the sequel let's spit that in there and again same command as before except a different name we're giving it a new sam account name a new id uh, same instance you but now it's assigned with all the properties giving it a new display name and a new user principal name let's get that in there Okay, that looks good. Let's check our man, Alonzo. So again, we can't really tell because we have to t we have to give get ad user a list of properties to get more than the defaults. So let's do that. So now we see the state address. Now we see all those things. I didn't do this with the first Alonzo user because I didn't want to give away the big reveal. Uh, but if we go ahead and do that up here. Same kind of stuff that we saw in ADUC. It doesn't have any of those addresses. So now we, we, we're halfway there. Twist, uh, twist number one is in place. We've copied the user. We've copied his properties. Let's go in here and look at that. We've got Alonzo 1, Alonzo 2, still no description. We've got the display name there. We've got a web page here that we don't have for the first Alonzo. And we've got an address here. And so we can go back in and compare the two versions of Alonzo and see that we were able to copy that. So you can see now how that would be handy for users that are in the same area, the same 
pieces of the office, or again, even if everybody's in the same area. And this is important because as we move into the cloud world and syncing up to Azure Active Directory and Office 365 and all those places, all of this data is incredibly important because the Microsoft graph up in the cloud makes decisions based on uh, users that have the same address, in the same office, those kind of things. So you want all of this data populated and then synced wherever you're going and you want it to be correct. So this is an easy way to get all of that. Now let's check Alonzo 2's groups. Let's see where he is at. It did not get Alonzo's groups. Now this is a pretty uh, a pretty significant one because if you're still using things on prem, you've got file shares and printers and all these things that have access control lists. Probably do this by group membership if you if you do things correctly. And we still don't have that. So what do we have to do to get that? Well, that is step number two of this video is how to copy over group membership. So let's go ahead and copy. Let's get a, a variable. Let's store all of our template users group memberships. So this is uh, the things that we saw before. Template number one is a domain user because everybody's a domain user. I am, you are, my cat is. Uh, but again, always also in the Ames office and in the nerds group. So let's go ahead. Now, the way that groups are stored in AD is kind of counterintuitive. Groups are not an object that are stored with the members. Each member uh, stores the access control entries of the SIDs for the groups that they're in. So the group membership is really a function of the user, not of the group. And you're saying to yourself, but Todd, if I go into ADUC and I go to a group, I can see the membership. You can, but that's because in the background, AD is going through the users and giving you that group membership. And if you think about how permissions work, when I log in, I get a list of all of the SIDs that I have uh, permission to. And so it's going to have my SID and every group that I'm in are all going to be part of my, uh, my bag there. And then when I try to access something, Windows goes and uses every SID that I've got and bangs against that thing to see if any of my SIDs have permission. So because of that, that group membership has to be a function of the user. So keeping that in mind, what we're going to do is we're going to get the list of users that our template user is in, and then we're going to walk through them and add our Alonzo2 user to each of those groups. So the command looks a lot like this. We're going to take M, we're going to pipe it through for each, so it walks through each group that our template user is in, and then it's going to add, we're going to use the add AD principal group membership commandlet, the identity is Alonzo2, and then the member is the member of is then whatever the current item is. So let's go ahead and run that. Ugh. PowerShell, PowerShell, PowerShell. Uh, we get a big blast of red on the screen and a warning and then an error and just a, a whole whirlwind of emotions as we try to add this. So what this error is saying is we can't add Alonzo2 to the domain users group because he's already there. Uh, and that makes good sense. We talked about that earlier. Everybody's in there. And so it just errors out. So let's see, um, while we're, we're in here, let's see what actually worked. Did this, uh, did this work or not? So it did. Now, I bring this up because I had varying experiences with this. Sometimes when I ran this, the, the group memberships would be walked through. Windows would see the error on domain users and it would stop and it wouldn't do the subsequent groups. So when I ran the get AD principal group membership, I would get just domain user for my new user for Alonzo2. And what I found was to get past that, I had to add a little bit at the end. So I run the same command that I ran before but instead I run error action silently continue. So that tells PowerShell when it hits that first one, that domain users one, and it gets the error instead of stopping and terminating with that, just silently continue and do the rest of the groups. And uh, so I'm gonna run that here just so it shows up in the transcript. So when you're, you can, you can do that for uh, you know, cheap insurance, but I did not have consistent results with that. So I found that the silently continue was the safest one of all. And then if we run this, we can go in here and verify his membership again is the same because we already saw it. And then we can come in here and refresh this. Check our man Alonzo2. He is a member of all of these glorious groups. And if I go into the Ames office and see the members, 
there's our man Alonzo too in there. Uh, so this is a great tool. This could be built into your onboarding process and you could, you know, script all of this out so that when you create a new user, you just put in their name, you know, the first name, last name, uh, your PowerShell script could piece together how your, your account names are made, you know, first name, NAS initial, or first dot last, whatever, copies, whatever the appropriate group is, does that. You're probably running Azure AD Connect, so you would want to kick off a sync, sync that user up to Azure Active Directory and get that going. Um, and then anything that you need to do, license them up, you could also do that. You could build that into your script too. So again, uh, this whole video came out because Rashi left me a comment, so please leave a comment below. Tell me what you think about this video. Tell me if there's other pieces, nooks and crannies of this that you'd like to see. Again, I'm Todd Clint. You can hit me up on Twitter, at Todd Clint. You can find out all the links to this uh, video. They're, they're in the comments below, but they're also at toddclint.com slash posh copy ad user let me know what you think uh, the more feedback we get on videos like this the more excited we are to make them uh, so let us know what you think thanks have a good day me again hey just a reminder if you want to subscribe click on my face over here or if you want to work together or just need a friend hit me up over here or if really what you wanted was more powershell videos it's probably it they are over here all right, thanks, see ya. Somebody stop the recording. <laughs>